So I've been using this microscope for a little while now and I've just discovered a problem. I just went to go and use it to try and do some iPhone repairs and the LED lights here, although it looks like it's glowing, actually it's only really badly, it's only barely on, right? Um, and I can't increase the brightness, I can't change it, I can't turn up and down. Now there are a control which I've pulled apart here. The top button is on and off and these two do the brightness of the LEDs. Right, so this one's increases, this one reduces it. So I push these and nothing, right? It's got this little microcontroller on here, it starts PWM, which controls a transistor, which then powers the lights, negative side of the lights. And there's nothing's changing. So, hmm, let's have a close look. Now, let's use the microscope to look at itself, because that's always confusing. Okay, so there's a microcontroller, can't see numbers on it. I've got some lighting. So you can see the board is version 1.3 and it looks like 2018 this is designed. Anyway, so the microcontroller output there is pin 5, comes up, goes through a resistor network here, so it's doing a voltage divider. So they've got a 5 on 1 resistor there, it's passing the voltage through, and the 5 on 2 is the 0 volt strapping. So I only provide the correct voltage to the base of that transistor there, which is U1. I don't know why I call it U1, because U is usually a microcontroller or chip or some kind, but it's only a transistor. Um, I don't know, it could be a MOSFET, I don't know, there's a number on it. Can we get that number off? I did see it before when I was looking at it. Oh, oh there we go, it's just there somewhere. Of course, right where it's not focused. I'll get it right now. Not having lighting is a bit of a pain, which is why I'm trying to fix it. So it's got the zero up rail on the top here, got the base here, so that's base, emitter, and collector over here. Collector goes through the board, flip it over, and you come to the back here, which is nicely labelled, quite like that. Okay, so you've got microscope and output, which is, it switches the negative side, the five up rails are all tied together, and the LED ones here. Now if that's this wire here is fraying a little bit, I need to tidy it up a little bit for a start. That's what I thought it was initially, maybe they're bridging across. Maybe it has bridged across, maybe that's what's blown that transistor. But uh, anyway, trace across and say LED minus is from that transistor there. I measured this transistor and it's a short between base and emitter. I've got no voltage on the base, but there is voltage on this resistor here. If I short across that, this is a temporary like tweezers. Um, the voltage disappears completely, so it's definitely being dragged down. And then diode mode on that transistor, and it's definitely short between base and emitter. So I'm going to try replacing that transistor. So I thought I'd show you these diode measurements first, using my new probes from Fluke. They sent me these as sponsored things. I've been trying them out, and I'll be doing a review on these things soon once I've had a bit more usage with them. If I stick the probe here on the negative side of the board, which you can barely see, if I get my fingers out of the way. So the negative is here, so that should be no resistance, that's fine. So that's the base, and also got no resistance. So we'll come over here and do the base to emitter junction, nothing, and oh, let's go back and do the base to collector junction, getting back 400. If I reverse the polarity, base to emitter, about 1. Oh, sorry, base to collector, base to emitter, still zero. So that is definitely shorted. So I'm going to try replacing that part. Now I've got a part out, I'm not sure about the pin out, I need to check this and verify. I'm not sure it's got the right pin out. I've got a whole bunch of little service mount transistors here. Why don't you have like a, I don't know, a cheat sheet showing what the pin outs are? And it's not actually probably short out. I should really organise that. So let's have a probe under here. That's a junction. That's a junction, so it looks like it might be right. It might be the correct pin out. So I might be able to swap this out. Nothing that way. Nothing that way. Cool, that looks like it's probably right then. So what we'll do is we'll put this transistor in its place and we'll see if it works. And here's a more of a look at the board, front and back. So you can see what we're dealing with here. Right. 
It's even kind of in focus. Alright, so swap this thing out. Let's put a bit of flux on here. I'm going to use hot air, but I may also just. No, we'll see. Here we go. Let's just try it. Fortunately, it's a bit noisy. Um, I think that's going to kill the ball. That's too high. Let's do this one. And let's get some tweezers, which I've lost. Here we go. Obviously, I've pulled the power. So we've got a set of 380 at 60 litres a minute airflow. Probably a bit of ground connection, the zero volt rail should be the last one to come off, and it was. Guess that one off. And get off my finger. And put the new one on. And done. That's looking good. Now it's uh, fixed up this wire over here, which is going to be a problem. So I've actually been really happy with this microscope. So it's just I like had this little slight manufacturing fault just here with this frayed wire. I think that's what's caused the problem. It's shorted out the output and overloaded the transistor. I'm pretty sure that's what's happened there. So let's put this by it. Soldering that just frayed wires up, that should be that solved. That will be good. I think that'll do it. That's all fine. Cool. I don't like the fact it's cutting into the wires, so I might actually just see if I can do something about that as well. Tie it up slightly more, maybe. I just don't like the way it's doing that. Is it being pinched? Maybe it's on the edge of the board. You see the insulation's broken there, so what I might actually do is stick some of my stuff here on and just seal those up again so they're potentially short against each other. I'll just do this, it'll probably end up gluing it into the case, but uh, that's what tends to happen anyway. And might as well run it across these as well just to make sure there's no more movement or fraying from those. That'll do the job. I have to let it dry for a little while, but in the meantime, we can test it. Alright, so we'll plug this back in, plug the power in, and we'll see what happens. Right, plug it in. And we have lights. Excellent. Can we turn it down? Yes, we can. Turn it back up again? Yep, we can. Excellent. So that's working exactly as it should. That's fixed. Now the transistor I've used here is a KST3904, which is like a 2SC3904, I suppose. But it's this obviously the SOP23 size package, you know. So pretty common part, really cheap, easy to get. I've got loads and loads of them, I've got hundreds of the things. You know, you buy them in, the, in a whole bunch, don't you? Get a salt one, you get loads of them, so I've got heaps. Um, I've got my little assortment box just here. I've got, you know, three little compartments full of them here, so I'm not sure of them. If you're looking for these things, I've did a review on these, I think. I know, I've done mailbags on these things turning up, we've got links. If you're interested, maybe I'll chuck some links down below to go to these boxes. If I can find the links, I'll chuck them back in. Um, these are really good boxes, I recommend them. So I hope you enjoy that little video. Um, pretty simple fix. Nice and straightforward, exactly what I like sometimes. Sometimes you want an easy one. So now I've got to put the remote back together once it's PVC electrical tape stuff's dry, then I can carry on using it. Excellent. Catch you later. Thanks. Make sure Sky gives a thumbs up, that sort of stuff. And uh, especially if you've not been here before. If you've not been here before, make sure you subscribe. Very important. And I'll catch you later. See you next one.